All right, doing something a little more fun today. We're gonna show you how to play backup PS1 discs on a PS2 Slim. So this will let you play imports, burned copies, and even burned and backed up PS2 games if desired. And the whole process can be done with just a free MC boot memory card and launch shelf. So you don't need any extra programs like CogSwap or ESR. So just a fun little way of playing disc-based backups if you have them, or you like translation patches and things like that. So. Again, this is covering the Slim specifically. I'm hoping to cover Fat in a different video, but let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so to get started with playing our disc backups on a PS2 Slim, we need to get the system disassembled with the top cover removed so we can block one of the disc cover sensors. So there's six screws. They're just hidden underneath these six areas here. And then you can pop the top off very easily. Again, pay attention to what you're doing so you don't cause damage to your systems because if you cause damage that's your own fault for not being careful but the reason we need to take this off is that there is a little disc switch sensor right here that we need to get pressed down and that one is only accessible if we take the top off I mean there's ways you could try to jam something in there with the lid itself but better to be precise so for today's example I have got it stuck down here with a piece of captain tape and we can confirm that it will work by I'm just gonna put a disc on this spindle real quick. Don't want to even think about laser stuff, but you can press the sensor here and the disc will begin spinning. And we know that it is blocked correctly. So I like to permanently block this back sensor so that way I don't have to keep opening up the PS2 because as long as you keep this sensor unblocked and then the disc brake unblocked, you can still use this like a normal system. But now you can go ahead and reassemble the top cover of the system and then again confirm that everything inside is being blocked correctly, that sensor inside is being blocked correctly. We can move the disc brake and press the inside lid sensor and the disc will begin spinning. So perfect, that inside sensor is now blocked. So now all we need to do is block the disc brake and block this inside disc sensor and we will be able to do disc swaps really easily. So for the disc brake, it just needs to be moved to the side and you can jam something up in here to keep it pulled back or you could tape it back. Either way works. So I went ahead and got that blocked off with a piece of tape for now and then I went ahead and slid a little hole in it right here for the disc cover so that way we don't have to worry about it getting stuck later. But then again, you could confirm that everything's working like it's supposed to by blocking this inside sensor and hey, look at that. That disc brake is not hitting the disc and it's able to spin around and do everything we need it to. Awesome. And now for the last sensor we need to block, it is right here and it can be done with something as easily as a teeny piece of paper. So you just kind of get that jammed up in there. And anytime you want to return the system to stock function, you could just take this piece of paper out and untape that one, and then the inside one is permanently pressed, so you don't have to take it apart. So you can always do this process if you want. But with that initial prep work out of the way of blocking the lid sensors and the disc brake, we're gonna go ahead and boot up our PS2 with no discs inserted into it. And then from here, go down to your free MC boot configurator option. Don't mind if your options look a little bit different than mine. Your setup's probably gonna vary compared to mine. But go ahead and make sure that fast boot is turned off in this screen. Otherwise your disc will auto boot and you won't be able to do the swap. So fast boot off and then save the configuration to your free MC boot memory card. And once that's done, go ahead and click on exit and then Go ahead and turn your PS2 off, insert the, insert a PS1 disc into your system and then go ahead and turn the system back on. It should start spinning up. And then it'll look like it's going to start playing, but then it takes you to your PS2 browser and that means we are good to go. So from here, press circle on your controller and we need to boot into launch elf. So just go ahead and navigate to where you have Launch Elf on your free MC boot menu. I renamed mine File Explorer, so this isn't what yours is gonna look like, but boot in to Launch Elf. And once you have booted into Launch Elf, you'll see that the disc in your tray has stopped spinning. And at the top of the screen, you'll see Stop Disc equals PS1 CD. But now we're free to swap the retail disc out for one of our backup games or translation patches or translation patch game, so here we go. Just gonna swap that disc in. 
And now inside Launch Help, just go into the file browser, head down to the MISC tab, and then press accept on PS2 disk. And the disk inside your tray should start spinning up again into your backed up PS1 game. And so here we are within our backed up PS1 game disc on our PS2 Slim. So here's Ape Escape. And as you can see, runs no differently than the actual disc itself. And for those of you that are curious, this can also be used to play import titles. So here I have Tales of Fantasia. This one doesn't have a translation of patch applied yet, unfortunately. But just to demo that it does work, we've already gotten into Launch Shelf, swapped it in. So now I'm just gonna go into the file browser, misc PS2 disk, and it will now load up. And there we go, Tales of Fantasia running from a backup disc on the PS2 Slim. And for those of you further curious, yes, you can do this to also boot import discs directly. So here we have Ace Combat 3 Electrosphere, Japanese version. So inside Launch Elf, Misc Tab, PS2 Disc. And there we go. So there we are, Ace Combat 3 Electrosphere, Japanese version, running on a uh, soft modded PS2. And for one last example, here is the PAL version of Spyro 3. So we've backed this one up to a disc. Already done the swap within Launch Elf, so now I'm just gonna go down to that MISC section, PS2 disc. And there it goes, booting right up. And you can even see there on the PlayStation screen, it says Sony Computer Entertainment Europe. Now for PAL stuff, you do need to make sure that you have some way of actually displaying PAL content on your display, since the resolution is quite different. So the RetroTank 4K is in use here. But even that, I'd need to uh, adjust a bit more to get PAL stuff to show up right. As you can see, the bottom's a bit cut off. With a lot of extra space at the top. But there we go, Spyro 3 PAL version running on our NTSC soft-modded PS2 Slim. Fun stuff. It is also worth noting that you can use this method to play PS2 backup discs or imports if desired, but when you have a modded system like this, it's better off just to use OPL with network loading or an MC to SIO MX for FSIO, or if you're on a PS2 FAT, just an internal hard drive. But here's a quick little demo I recorded of doing it on a PS2 FAT, just because I don't have a PS2 Slim that'll read DVDs at the moment. So there we are, Need for Speed Underground has booted up off of that burned disc. And there we have it. PS2 disc swap successful, and we are now playing a variable frame rate version of Need for Speed Underground on PS2, so fun stuff. But once again, at any point, if you want to return the system to stock play, you just need to take out that piece of paper you jammed in that front lid sensor, and then the piece of tape on the disc brake, and it all works like it originally did. Very nice and simple. You see that it doesn't auto spin up until the disc is closed. And then just open it back up. And again, you can confirm that everything will still work just by pushing this lid sensor down. So, very easy to do, 
No extra programs required than what came with your FreeMC boot memory card or install, so it's just a nice method. And it works on most things. I'm not going to say it works on everything, because that would be foolish, but everything I've tried has been working really great, so just another method of playing your PS1 games that doesn't involve Mechapone and potentially damaging your system permanently. But there you have it, a way to use your free MC boot memory card to boot up PS1 game backups and import titles so you can further enjoy your system with PS1 games. And again, if desired, you can use this for PS2 stuff, but the internal drive options or MX for SIO options and network loading are probably gonna be better off for PS2 stuff. But thank you so much for making it to the end of today's video. I hope it helps you have more fun with your PS2 Slim when it comes to PS1 stuff. But here at the end, we have the couple of usual favors to ask, so if you haven't done this already, please hit that thumbs up, thumbs down, depending on how much you like this video, as well as that sub button notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, be sure to check out that join button here on YouTube and the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Every little bit helps keeps this place going, and we're super grateful to all of our current champs. Thank you for believing in us, and just continue being amazing. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.